So for our one sample hypothesis testing, I wanted to go through and talk about all of the different types um, of tests that kind of fall underneath this umbrella of one sample hypothesis testing. So when we're talking about this one sample, is that we're basically gathering one, um, kind of one sample and we're comparing it against some hypothesized value. So things that fall underneath this. Let's look at proportions first, because uh, it's pretty easy. So let's do, yeah, proportions. And so the one sample proportions is we would go out, we'd take a sample, and we basically need to term things in terms of a success and terms of a failure. Remember, because this is basically like a binomial approximation uh, that, that we're used, being able to use our central limit theorem uh, in order to have this normal approximation. Anyhow, so we could go out and like look at colors of cars on a car lot, and we'd want to figure out the proportion that were yellow. And if we did that, then yellows would be the successes and everything else would be a failure. Uh, so that's how we kind of have to term things. And when we do that, we wind up, when we do our hypothesis testing, we're left with um, the variables of we're going to have a sample size, uh, we're going to have a hypothesized true proportion, and we're going to have our sample proportion. And so the, basically the kind of the equations that, that we wind up using are something like this, where we have, uh, let me figure it out, here we go. It's our Z equals P minus a pi naught divided by, and we gotta do our standard error of pi naught times pi naught complement divided by n. Uh, but really, we're not going to be doing this by hand. We're going to be having our, our computer uh, do this for us uh, so that we can, well, we can actually kick out all the values. But our first one that we have is, is proportions, is our single sample proportions. We're looking at um, the number of yellow cars on a specific car lot. We're just taking one sample. Okay, the next ones that, that we have, we've got, we're dealing with means. I am, when we deal with means, we've got a couple of options here too. Okay, so we could do, if we know uh, sigma, if we know the population standard deviation. And if we know this guy, then are the variables that we are going to have, then we're going to know what sigma is, we're going to know what n is, we're going to have an x bar, and we're going to have a mu naught, or our hypothesized mu. And to figure out our test statistic here, we are going to use this z equals, and then we're going to do, um, well, we're, we're going to do this guy. So it will be x bar, minus the hypothesized mean, mu naught, divided by sigma, divided by the square root of n. All right, so that's if we know what, if we know sigma. Uh, this is a pretty rare case, actually, though. Most of the time, we have no idea what sigma is. So we don't know. And if that's the case, then the variables that we do know, they're going to be s, n, x bar, and mu naught. And then the equation that we're going to be using for a test statistic is going to be this t equation, x bar minus mu naught, divided by s, divided by the square root of n. All right, so we should be familiar with, with those equations. Now there is one other, uh, one other means test that we can do that we haven't covered yet that's really unique because uh, it kind of straddles the line between one sample uh, and two sample hypothesis testing, but it's better if we think about it as a 
one sample means. Okay, and this is what is called a lot of times as, so this is still means, uh, but it's known as matched pairs. And what we're looking at is we're looking at the average distance uh, between two values. So we use this a lot, a lot in like twin testing, especially like in pharmaceuticals. So for example, let's say that I'm trying to see like how much better a new pain medication is than a placebo. So what I could do is I could bring in twins um, because in a sense they are identical twins. It's because they have like the same genetic material between the, the two of them. So if that happens, and if I give one of them uh, this Tylenol pill or you know some other pain reliever, and I'm comparing it against some sugar pill or a placebo, I can compare how long it took for their pain to, to subside or to recede. Um, we could do this, there's lots of ways that we can do match pairs. The way that, that you have to do match pairs is you have to have something that is similar between the two groups that you're looking at a difference between them. Uh, so there has to be like this one-to-one -one relationship. You have to have a difference of everything, and we're looking at the average um, between them. Uh, so we could do this like with a sunblock. We wanted to see like how uh, how much damage from the UV from the sun do you get on an arm that doesn't have sunblock versus an arm that does have sunblock. And so if I were to go out to the beach and get a bunch of volunteers, put sunblock on one arm, none on the other, and then measure their damage after you know, two hours on the beach on a sunny day, I could then compare how the difference of how much less, um, oh, the, the, average, like, the average difference in the UV damage between the two. Uh, infomercials use this a lot too. Uh, you know, if they have you know some like water repellent, you know that they're trying to sell, they'll take like, like a T-shirt and apply half of it with uh, with the water repellent stuff, and then they throw like I don't know tomato sauce on the shirt, and they show how it stains one shirt, and then it just drips off the other one. Uh, so th they use mat this kind of match pairs testing a lot too. Uh, so when we do this match pairs testing, uh, what we are going to know is we're going to have these. Um, these values. We are now going to know what, uh, not sigma, sorry, let's get rid of that. So what we are going to know is we will know how many differences we're looking at. So this is kind of like ND, the number of differences. We're going to have X bar D, or the average of the differences. And we're going to have uh, like mu naught d. Um, so it's like the hypothesized mean difference. Most of the time, we we have that be zero. Um, most of the time, that that's all we have. Now we don't have to have it as zero, but typically we we're going to say that these two um, that there's going to be no difference between the between the two, and then we're looking at seeing like the average difference. Um, and the other thing that we have is kind of like this, oh dang it, it's writing sigma again. We have SD, or the standard deviation of the differences. And then our equation that we use is, I mean, it's essentially the same. So what we have is we have this T, and we have X bar D minus, and we can have mu naught d and then divide by our standard deviation d divided by the square root of n. And like I said, most of the time when we do this, this guy disappears And what we're left with is zero. Most of the time, we just do that zero for the mu naught difference. So in our one sample hypothesis testing, there are kind of these four options. We have one when we're dealing with categorical data, when we're looking at our proportions. We have two like classical means, where one where we know what the standard deviation is, and one where we don't know what the, where the st what the standard deviation is. Most of the time, we're using that bottom one where we don't know what the standard deviation is. 
And then the last one that we have is the means with matched pairs. And, uh, and this is where we're doing like a direct comparison between two linked things and then looking at the average difference um, between those linked things. Uh, and we'll do examples of all of these, especially in our software, to show how we can, uh, how we can do our hypothesis testing and how each of these uh, actually work out.